Hello and welcome. I'm Zinder and this should be the level 63, yes, Ninja Quest. So, continue along the previous storyline. Uh, ah, Katarina, I have a letter for you from Master Aboro. It would appear that his investigation in Kugani has borne fruit. He, here, see for yourself. Dear Katarina, I hope this letter finds you well. After a long and rather uneventful voyage, we have arrived safely in Kugane. Captain Jack seems quite taken with the Hingen culture and is enjoying a stroll in the pleasure quarters at this very moment. But forgive me, you are not interested in a diary of our travels. As for the matter of the scroll, rumors abound of a band of Doman Scofflaws have been causing a stir in town of late. Putting together the accounts we have heard, the good captain and I are convinced that these are the thieves we seek. If the word about town is to be believed, these individuals are far more dangerous than we had imagined. I trust that you have been pursuing your ninjutsu training with your usual diligence. My apologies, of course you have. In any event, we would have you join us at your earliest convenience. We will be keeping an eye out for your arrival. Seek us in the alley behind the second pier ferry docks. Safe travels, friend. It is good to see Master Aboro in good spirits once more. Ever since the elders commanded him to remain here in Eorzea, he has not quite been himself. After all, Shinobi without a duty to carry out is as a hawk with clipped wings. It is good to see Master Oboro soaring high once more. Still, I worry. Though I have great respect for the man, he can often be too trusting for his own good. Pray go to his side, friend, and see that he does not get himself into undue trouble. May the Kami carry you safely across the sea. Yes. Much safety carrying. Okay. Here is Oboro and Jack and them. Katarina, I thank you for answering my call. Subame too has made the journey from the village to join us in retrieving the scroll. It is an honor to stand by your side again, Katarina. Master Oboro will doubtless benefit from your presence, as he always does. Likewise, I figure we use a few more Dimbadambas on the job, so I've sent for Underfoot and the Stray. Their ship should be pulling into harbor afore long. In the meantime, allow me to share what we have learned. Reliable sources have it that the theft of the scroll is the work of the Garnet League, a notorious band of outlaws feared throughout Doma. When the Doman Rebellion was crushed one year ago, many a samurai fled the battlefield to escape the Empire's wrath. Dishonored and unable to return home, most turned to banditry to eke out a living, and it is the most lethal of these warriors who formed the Garnet League. Cutting down innocent men for their coin purses, plundering villages. The men and women of the Garnet will gladly stain their hands with blood, as long as it means they will live to see the morrow. Why they covet the soul scroll, uh, scroll so, I cannot say. What I do know is that if we do not stop them, they are all but certain to leave a trail of corpses in their way. We must move, and quickly. Fortunately, they should not prove hard to find. Confident in their ability to cut down anyone who dares oppose them, they take little trouble to conceal themselves. On the contrary, they parade their garnet-hued kimono for all to see. You can distinguish them from the similarly garbed Sekisugumi by their lack of hakama and their singularly uncouth demeanor. Let us split up and cover as much ground as we can. Katerina, I would entrust the Shikozi Holstery and the Rakuza district to you. Keep to the shadows and gather what knowledge you can. When we are done with the task, let us reconvene here. Sorry, I may be uh, reading pretty fast. It's just, just kind of how I am. And this is down. Oh, I see. These men look to be members of the Garnet League. They seem to be discussing something. I swear, I just wanted to see what all the fuss was about. Barely put a finger on the thing, and next I knew it, Zakuro's blade was at my throat. Thought she was going to cut me down right on the spot. Put yourself in her shoes. They say our client is such a dangerous man, he's been known to kill those who reneged on their agreements. If anything happened to the scroll, her life, and ours, would be as good as forfeit. You're saying she's scared... Uh, you're saying she's as scared as us. Zakuro Brightblood, who single-handedly cut down a hundred Garleans in a day during the rebellion. Zakuro Brightblood, who dyes their hair red with the blood of her foes. 
She cuts an imposing figure, this is true, but deep down, she's actually quite the sensitive type. Sensitive? Don't make me laugh. Okay. Zoom. Uh, where, where would they be? Ah, that looks to be them. These men look to be members of the government. They seem to be discussing. One day she has us sneaking into a bleeding imperial storehouse, and the next the Confederacy is chasing us halfway across the Ruby Sea. Zakuro could pay us twice what she does, and it wouldn't be bloody worth it. Come now, even you must admit it was quite the little adventure. Though it was fortunate that we came upon those Eorzean pirates when we did, and that they believed our little ruse. In the end, we made it here with our little prize, did we not? We simply took a slight detour. We didn't all make it. Or have ye forgotten those we left behind at Bloodshore? Cut down by our pursuers, no doubt. The poor bastards. Whose brilliant idea was it to go along with that masked man's plan anyway? If our brothers could not fend for themselves, then they only have themselves to blame. As for our mysterious benefactor, he has led us here as promised, did he not? Now we only need to wait for our client to show and deliver the goods, and we will never need to worry about going hungry again. Speaking of which, just how long does our man mean to keep us waiting? I'm beginning to wonder if someone isn't playing us all for fools. Now, now, we're late with our delivery after all. Word has it our client returned to Koshu when we did not show and is now making the long journey back to Kugane. We owe him some patience, do we not? Mm-hmm. Okay, back to a borrow in them. It would seem we have everyone assembled. Excellent. Let us share all we have learned. Allow me to see if I have this right. So in short, the Garnet League lifted the scroll from a Garlean storehouse at the bidding of an unknown Hingen client. They mean to sail straight from Yangsha to Kugane, but ran afoul of the Confederacy, doubtless because they were too poor to pay the ruby tithe. In fleeing, they were captured by the Kraken, so they claimed to be Doman refugees seeking asylum. Upon arriving in Orzia, they made off with the scroll and eventually found safe passage to Kugani, with Karasu's aid. That one's motives remain as inscrutable as ever, but I digress. Furthermore, they are led by one Zakuro Blightblood, Brightblood, who about, about whom no small number of tales are told. Regardless of their veracity, they are known... The, 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 yeah. There can be no doubting that she is a formidable opponent. For my part, I heard that she is most protective of the scroll and keeps it on her person at all times, night and day. I heard that Zakuro and her followers have rented a room with the Bokairo, an inn in town famous for its hot spring baths. And old Jack managed to whittle that the cove is right fond of her flowing locks and that she fancies herself a cup of tea making the trip from the inn to the tea house and back at least thrice a day. That is most enlightening, Captain Jack. Now we must find a way to get our hands on the scroll before Zakuro's client arrives. But how? We could challenge her to single combat, but the Sekasugumi would not look kindly on that. Besides, we are shinobi, are we not? We must use stealth to our advantage. We simply need a plan. Look out below! Underfoot's on the scene! Good to see you again, Katarina. Can't wait to snilch the new tricks you've learned from your friends here. What's a mort got to do to get herself some sushi? I'm bloody starved. And what's with all these bleeding seagulls? I swear if another one takes a shite on my hair, it'll be seagull stew for dinner tonight. <laughs> Wait, that's it. The Keb, you're a bloody genius. And so am I, I reckon. Gather round and lend me your waddles, friends. Old Jack's got a plan. First, we catch Sekiro... Zakuro as she's beaten her way from the inn to the tea house. Underfoot, Vakeb, Subame, you three will be in charge of causing a scene and stopping the Morton attracts. Meanwhile, Katarina, you make your way to that perch atop the markets and drop some imitation seagull shite down from above. What with her precious locks all mucked up, the mort's sure to make for the hot spring. She can't very well bring the scroll into the water, so we just follow along, all stealthy-like, and heave it from whatever basket she stowed it away in. For good measure, Obor and I will head to the bathhouse and we'll... as well and keep the girl occupied until Katarina has the scroll safely in her daddles. 
A most impressive plan, Captain Jack, but I have one question. How do you propose the two of us keep Zakuro occupied? Obora, surely you remember our visit to Bronze Lake and the little show I put on for our pirate friend. It's all quite simple, really. I'm not certain I understand what you... Oh. On second thought, I'm not quite convinced this is the best course of action. Ah, give yourself some more credit, lad. Now, Katerina, you want to climb up to the top of the roof of the... Uh, up to the roof atop the Bacairo and make your way across the wire atop the markets. There, this white dye should do a suitable seagull shite impersonation. Once underfoot in the gang, there's a curl in position, let her fly. All right, lads and lasses, look sharp. We'll meet back here once all's Bob. That's a bit of a ways. Alright, so if I remember this correctly, here. I like the whole idea of skulking across the rooftops as a ninja. It's one of the reasons why the Grant and Play Man, the Assassin's Creed games were pretty, like, fun at times, but they got very repetitive. I didn't get any past, I think, Brotherhood. The pain! Oh, the pain! My poor girl, whatever is the matter? Someone, anyone, find a healer. This girl needs help. What was... Ah, bird shite! Oh, bloody brilliant. I end up gone. Thank you, kind sir and madam. But we're not. I am not ill. You see, I simply haven't had a bite to eat all day. Ah, is that all now? Fortunately, the Chicago Holstery is just a short walk away, and I hear their sushi is positively to die for. Shall we? My hair! My beautiful hair! Back to the bath bathhouse, I suppose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm still here. Whee. Oh, wait. Can I actually use it in the air? That was unexpected. Hmm. You search the basket, but to no avail. The scroll must be around here somewhere. You search the basket. Blah, blah, blah. I wanted to see where they were distracting her at. Real quick. I thought it was actually in here, but... Don't see them. Ah, there they are. Yep. I'm giving her a hard time. One scroll acquired. And one meeting point obtained. I mean, I know this was a whole stealth mission thing, but... I could have sworn there was more fighting in most of these missions, but I guess I could be wrong. Well done, my friends. The operation was, by any measure, a rousing success. That said, I have not seen Subama and the others. I do hope all is well. Now that was some rum fun, if I do say so myself. As for the cove, I wouldn't fret. Like as not, the cabin underfoot dragged her off to yaffle on some of Kugani's finer de delicacies. No doubt you're right, Captain Jack. In the meantime, pray show me the scroll, Katarina. I would see just what it is that Sakuro's myster mysterious employer covets so. It's the mysterious fourth mudra. Spoilers. Why, this is, are my eyes to be believed, the forbidden mudra of summoning? I had half thought that it was just a ghost story meant to strike fear into the hearts of shinobi who would stray from their path. Forbidden summoning. 
I wouldn't know a mudger from my own grandmum, but that sounds right dangerous. Indeed it is, Jack. Captain Jack. The legends say that if the summoner's focus wanes for even a moment, the monstrous beast called forth by this mudra will not hesitate to devour him whole. Many years ago, it was gifted from our village to the king of Doma, then sealed away to be used only in the most dire of circumstances. But it was lost in the chaos of the Garlean invasion, and never seen again. So it has been sleeping in an imperial vault all these years. So even with all this bleeding, all-powerful summon at their fingertips, the Domans couldn't hold off the Empire. Guess it wasn't all it was cracked up to be, eh? On the contrary, we never had the chance to find out. Master Gekai, who led the Shinobi, deemed the risk too great and refused to employ it, even as our nation fell. Whether Master Gekai plotted this betrayal even then, or whether he had our countrymen's best interests at heart, I cannot say, though I would like to believe the latter. Nevertheless, it is clear that none in Garlemal knew of the scroll's true power, and how it sat untouched until it was stolen by the Garnet League at the beginning, bidding of some unknown master. But aside from my fellow shinobi, who out there would know of the scroll's true power. But it matters little now. We have the scroll, and I must return it to its rightful home in my village. Afraid I can't let you do that, friend. I promised the Krakens I'd bring the scroll back for them, and I'll not have it said that Jack ain't a man of his wits. After all, the scroll's been missing from your village for twenty-odd summers. No, clearly no one's suffering much. That's hardly the issue, Captain Jack. This scroll is an ancient treasure. It belongs in Doma. It belongs to those who found it, and that's the Krakens. Gods, if you ain't a stubborn bastard. Gentlemen, gentlemen, must you make such a scene? After all, strictly speaking, the scroll belongs to neither of you. Krasu, wherever did you... But never mind. Thank you for guiding us here. You may rest assured that the scroll will safely return to Doma. You have my gratitude. Oh, Oboro, my dear, sweet, deluded Oboro. You grow ever dimmer by the day. Do you truly believe that I do what I do for you? I did say that I was pulling the strings all along in this puppet play, did I not? Very well. Allow me to put it in words even you can understand. The scroll belongs in Hingashi to the master I now serve. My mistake was in trusting to Zaguro and her lackeys what I should have seen to myself from the very start. Oh well, live and learn, I suppose. In any event, allow me to propose a simple transaction. You hand over the scroll and I return your friends to you with their heads still attached to their bodies. A fair trade, no? Karasu, uh, Karasu you craven. One second, ah, I do believe we can have even more fun. Keep your eyes and ears out, dim one. You'll be hearing from me again soon. I keep bumping my mic. I'm hoping that's not coming through. I'm just lightly touching the bottom of the uh, arm. Curse it all. And here I believe the man had turned over a new leaf after leaving Gekai. But no, it would seem that he had simply found another villain to serve. Once a rook, always a rook, I reckon. And a sharp one at that. Underfoot and the stray aren't the types to get bonded so easily. Er, boned? Boned. Uh, as long as we have the scroll, Karasu is not like to cause our friends any harm, and yet he has an unpredictable, uh, he's a, as unpredictable an adversary as they come. We must proceed with caution. Forgive me, Katerina. It would mean much to me if you would remain in Kugane until our work here is through. Pray continue to train your ninjutsu, and I shall call upon you again when the time is right. And that was the end of the 63 quest. I believe I remember how the uh, 65? I think it's 5. Pretty sure it's 5. I'm not going to click Click it here. Mouse over that. Yeah. Pretty sure I remember vaguely how that goes. So. But we'll do that next time. Have a good day.